then. If you ain't got no seed, you can't have no soil. In other words, if you don't have no soil, what you need seed for? In other words, you got to generate in your mind the soil, and then you got to put the seed in the soil, and then you got to keep on putting the mindset, which is the word of God, on that seed for it to grow and plenish. And God said, when it grow up, it'll grow up so large and so strong that birds of the air will lodge on the leaves of it, on the branches of it. And then God be believing according to Jeremiah, well not Jeremiah, but John, uh, what in the book of John chapter 15, he talks about you'll be a part of the true vine. That everything that, that bears fruit, God said he prunes it and makes more fruit. Everything that don't bear fruit, he's a, it, it, just like at your old house or old branches that fall off the tree. Notice when you take a live branch from your house or from your wherever you may be, if you don't nourish it like you're supposed to, it will die. When a branch falls off the tree in the midst of a storm and it lays there for a while, not being replanted, it will end up dying. I planted some trees in my backyard, but I dug them up out of one place and put them in the next place. And at the whole course of the time that I put it in there, or when I put that tree in the ground in the area I wanted to put it in, it died because I uprooted it from its roots. That was a season I had to go through before it bring forth more, more fruit. Am I somewhere? You know, when you uproot from somewhere, it takes you too long to be planted somewhere else because you got to understand that really you got to be able to reroot. And while you rerooting, there's things you're losing out from God. And when I planted those trees, I dug them out of the front yard and I put them in the backyard. And when I put them in the backyard, and it was hot that summer, but it died. Even though I had it in a shaded area and I watered it real strong, but it died because it had to go through a season of replenishing. What are you saying, Pastor Ellis? You got to know where you're going. You just can't be running everywhere with every, uh, under every wind doctrine. You, 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 they don't like you. You don't like it over until you uproot and you run over there. Matter of fact, when you think about the book of Psalms, one, he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight shall be in the law of the Lord, and as the law does he meditate day and night. Now notice what he's saying. He said, you should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruits in this season. Trees that can't be planted to keep uprooting can't bear no fruit. That's why Jesus talked about that tree going into Bethel. No man eat of this tree from this day on. And the disciples came back and looked upon that tree and said, man, look, the master, the tree you spoke to has died. It, it, it cursed, it's dead. You can't keep hopping around. Trees that don't have no root can't bear no fruit. You, you don't like it at this church, so you go over that church. You, you don't like it at this church, so you don't go over that church. You keep uprooting and uprooting and uprooting. You're going to uproot yourself right onto the kingdom. A man who can't set still and understand what God has in store for his life is a man that's already lost. You got this thing going on right now that you wanna you don't you don't you don't listen to no man. Well, let me tell you something. If you understand the book of Amos and what it says, the Bible says he don't bring a word into the land that's revealed through the prophet, his chosen ones. If you really want to get more education and understanding the Bible, if you look back to the history of the Bible, you see every man in the Bible, God had chosen to bring forth the word in the land which is in. Look at Obadiah. You look at James. He didn't like his brother, but he had to obey the things he had to do because now he's writing a book about James. And he didn't come to understand it. He became the chief priest down in Jerusalem. And he had to realize and understand now that he's the man of God, that he believed that his brother was the Messiah. You look at all the Elijah. God used Elijah. Look at David. God used David. Even in the midst of all their troubles, God yet used them. Am I in there anywhere? Before you sit back and say that you want to, I, I don't need to obey no man. I, I don't need no man around me. You know, that you're going you're gonna, to, you're gonna, he, that he's going to nourish, excuse me? Now, where you, where you get that from? So that's why you got to be careful what you teach and what you hear. You don't see nowhere in the Bible where God nursed somebody on their own until he got them somewhere. You don't see a baby sitting out there finding milk for itself by itself until somebody bring him into a place that he needs to be. No, when the baby leaves the mother's stomach, the baby comes out and he uses the mother's breast milk or the milk that he gets from the store. The baby's never left alone without milk, so you got to get milk from somewhere. You need a father in the ministry, not just a father. You need somebody to guide you and teach you where you need to go. All y'all running out here, all astray and stuff. I, I don't. I, I love the Lord, but I don't. I don't listen to no man. I don't pray. Did anybody ask you to praise no man? But you got to do it. You got to obey instructions, just like the prophets and all the other priests did. You go out there. You talk about over in the Old Testament. You look over in the Levitical priesthood. They talk about the priests. I did to go into the house of the sacrifice for sins every year because God told them to come in the midst of the mercy seat. And if they didn't bring the sacrifices to them and ignored everything that God told them to do, then their fields probably would have been destroyed. They probably would have had a curse upon them. But the word of God did declare in the creed that the sun came forth. There'd be no more bulls or goats or anything like that. But Jesus declared the word also that you can't come to the Father unless you come through the Son. And you got to understand the prophets of old before you understand the prophecy of new. 
The Bible said the whole 66 books. We may be living in the New Testament times, but the Bible said don't forsake the old because the old is a type of shadow to get you where you are today. And this is why we all messed up and discombobulated in the body of Christ right now. That we run around, we're trying to self-teach our own self. And the body of God talks about over in the book of Corinthians, how man can only know the things of a man, but no man knows the things of the spirit. You got all the books you want. I ain't saying you can't read. But you got to understand that you got to not go in your house and shut the door and close the door. When you close, you pray in private and God will reveal to you open. God is not going to let you run out there ragged and just running around the place everywhere by yourself. James began to speak of the word. He said, but if any man lack faith, and he said, but in, in the sixth verse, you know, let's go to the fifth verse. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that God will give to the man liberally, unbridled, not. And he should give to him. He says in the sixth verse, but let him ask in faith. Not what wavering. You wavering when you don't obey the commands of God. God put people in your life to help you to go where you're going to go. We talk about the process of when you're at your job. You can't just go to the CEO. You got ranks you got to go through. You got supervisors. You got lead men on the floor for you to go through. If you got a trouble in your job, what you're going through, the CEO ain't paying you no man. That's why he put people in position. Then they take the buck off of him. And that's the same thing in the process of the fivefold ministry. You can't raise the ministry by yourself. You got to be a part of the fivefold and work within the fivefold. He talks about the thumb, which is the apostle. He talks about the pointer finger, which is the prophet. He talks about the middle finger, which I think is the most powerful area of the ministry right now, is evangelism. Then he talks about the pastor teacher. If you can't understand how the fivefold go, you just lost. You can't do everything by yourself. I was looking at the Warriors game last night. That young man, Stephon Curry, wasn't a man, even though he may be the MVP of everything. But that young young brother, I can get his name right now because I ain't the basketball follower, but I watched the game. You know, but that young man hit them threes last night. All them threes he was hitting last night and broke the NBA record. He wasn't no Stephon Curry that won them. It was that young man who held them up. Stephon may have did something down the stretch to keep the game going, to keep it in the lead. But if it wasn't for that young man and them constant threes that he hit, God said you got to keep on constantly dropping threes in the kingdom of God to stay ahead of the enemy. The Bible declares and decrees that even in the midst of you going through things in your life, as you go back up and you look at the process, what he says over there in the book of James, and he talks about the process, that he says in the verse, uh, we look at verse 3, he said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith births patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be entire one in nothing. But look what he said, that if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, that God give to him liberally and unbrighteth not, and it shall be given to him. The Bible says, seek God first. Seek God first. You got to understand what it says in the book of John. Over there in the book of John, you go to the book of John. John talks about some of the power pack things about how Jesus came in the midst of the land and he began to declare the word according to what his father has given him. And Jesus began to understand and realize when in the book of John, he says that, uh, I think it's that John 14. If we, I'm going to roll over that right because I don't want to miss, get, I want to miss teach you in anything because I ain't somebody to know it all. I, I'm never going to know it all. I don't know it all. I've just got a gift from God to do the things I do. I don't try to think of myself as being anything. I'm nothing without God. Am I in there anywhere? The Bible says over in uh, John 14 and verse 10, says, believe it not that I'm in the Father, the Father in me. Well, he makes a strong indication there that he couldn't do nothing to do one for his father. If the father wouldn't spoke to Mary, she would never have the baby. It wouldn't come forth. If Messiah was going to come, it's been predestined and prophesied that he would come. But nobody, even in the Old Testament, they said, them man over there talking about the heroes of faith. Over in the book of Hebrews, them brothers were shish kebab, fed to the lions. They said, man, we ain't seen the Messiah yet, but it's better for us to go ahead and die. We believe anyway that even when Jesus died on the cross, he went down and kicked the bottom up out of hell and took the keys out of Satan's hands. And they say that in the midst of the time when he was down on the cross, they said the earth where it came and, and spirits came up and witnessing throughout all the world. The Bible said, believe it or not in, James, in, in John chapter 10, believe it not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. He said, the words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. He tells you right there, it ain't got nothing to do with him. He's under the command and authority of his father. But the father that dwells in me, he said, he does the work. He does the work. He said, believe in me that I am in the father and the father in me. Or else believe me for the work's sake. I am I somewhere? You ain't got to believe me, but watch my smoke. Watch the woman with the issue of blood. Am I in there? Watch Jairus' daughter. Watch Brian Bonham and Betty. Watch the lepers. Am I talking to somebody? Watch the woman with the bent back. Watch the woman over there from Zarephath. Watch these things where God performs in the earth today. He did more miracles in Bethel than everywhere. If you read the Bible, most of his miracles took place in Bethel. 
Jesus did some powerful work over there. Even the woman at the well. I got to go through that. When people keep looking at you as if you ain't got what it takes, just keep on telling what Jesus said. No, I, 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 got to, I got to go through Samaria. I got to go through it. It may be rough and it may be hard, but you got to go through. Because when you get to the other side, it ain't going to be hard as you think it would be. The Bible declared that when Jesus got to the other side and he was weary from his journey, he sat there on the well, and now a woman came over to Samaria to draw water. Am I in there with anybody? The side said the woman began to draw water, and Jesus asked, Would well, you draw me a cup of water? And Jesus declared that, well, she declared to Jesus that we don't have no dealing with Jews. And Jesus began to reply with a strong word if you knew the gift of God and who it was that you're talking to. If you knew who it was that you were talking to. Sometimes we got to learn how to treat brothers and sisters right in the body of Christ and not look at ourselves a bit more high than we ought to think. But we need to be sober-minded and blessed and understand that even when we look at the book of Jeremiah over in chapter 7, that he told Jeremiah, go stand by the gates of Judah and speak to the people and tell the people to mend their ways and they come into the house of God. Don't come in and talk about the temple, the temple, the temple, the building, the building, the building. Come in here and don't be coming in here fighting against your brothers and sisters, against the widows. Don't be coming with lying words and then come back up in the tell well, we love the Lord. That's double-mindedness. Your mouth is doubled. You say you love the Lord, but then the body said, bitter and sweet, it's supposed to come out of the same fountain, but yet you're doing it. You go in the house of God every day and talk about the people up in there, but then you ask God to bless you. The Bible said the same mouth you bless with, the same mouth you you curse me with. You know what I mean? And, just, and the word of God does say that he made everybody in his own image, that you ought to get along with all your brothers and sisters. Word of the wise in the name of Jesus. If you ever want to get blessed or come out of what you're in, keep your mouth closed about people and learn to pray for them who despitefully use you. Mm, don't believe all this other stuff that people tell you. You got to have a fighting temper and talk about everybody you need to talk about. But he goes on in the book of James. He said, but let him ask of God, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. You see, you can't be absent-minded and double-minded when you're asking God for something. No matter how long it may take, you got to have patience. The Bible says, according to verse 3, knowing that this is the trying of your faith, works patient. But it says in verse 4, let the patience have its perfect work. If God commanded the authority for you to have what he's given you, and he said no good thing will hold from you, according to Psalms 84, 11, if you walk upright, then he's going to give it to you. God has given and commanded the blessing. He cannot reverse it. That's what he says over there in the book of, what is it, Numbers 23, 19 to 21. He comes back again and confirms the word over in Isaiah 55. Am I in there with anybody? He said, the word of God go forth and it will not come unto him void, but it will accomplish all that and therein. Am I in there anywhere? He comes right back and says the same thing over again. They said, the words that I speak out of my mouth will not come unto me void. He gives you proof about the fact over in Isaiah 55, 11. If you go back up to Isaiah 55 and 8. He says, my thoughts and your thoughts, my plans, your plans, my ways, your ways. And then gives you a hedge of protection that when you fight against the devil, he said, far above all princes of palace and power and dominion, not only named in this world, but everything which is to come. He's already gave you a hedge that when you fight the devil, he got you the armor that you need, which is the word of God. Don't be so scared to pull out your sword against the devil and chop his head off. You can't let the devil keep on getting over on you, making you think that, God, that, 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 that people are coming to you with deception. Now, we ain't got to go to church. Now, you don't go to church. The word of God clears you, tells you over there in the book of, what is it, Psalm 133? Don't forsake the assembly. It's power in numbers. I bet you Stephon Curry didn't win the whole game by himself last night. I guarantee you there was men around him. So I heard the young man Shaquille O'Neal say that you got to know how to distribute the ball around to everybody. You got to use the whole five-fold when you're moving in power. Just like when an NFL player makes a call to a certain part of the team, he got to use the receivers. The receivers are on uh, the, the, the tight ends. The tight ends count on the tight ends. Uh, uh, count on, well, the running backs count on the tight ends. They count on the linemen. They count on the quarterback to bring the right signal to him. Sometimes you got to go back to the huddle and you got to re-up. You got to get the right signal that you need when you go forth. He said, but let him ask in faith, not waver. If you got it wrong, go back to the huddle. Get the right call in your life. Don't be scared to say you messed up. Did you make the wrong call? Look, I reversed the call of every evil thing. Every evil thing that ever happened in anybody. I reversed the call of evil right now in the name of Jesus. That every false word that ever went out of the mouth of any man in the leadership of the household. That the enemy tried to make them feel unethical. But you called them during the season which in any woman of God. In the name of Jesus. All the mistakes she may have made, Father God. I'm asking to reverse the charges right now in the name of Jesus. Put it back on her credit in the name of Jesus. That's the credit of the kingdom of God. That she may re-up and go back and do what you called her to do. But do it right this time in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Christ of Nazareth. Am I in there anywhere? Now, y'all don't want to hear nothing like this because I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The word of God says over in the book of James, but any man, he, but, 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 but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For that he who had wavered is like the waves of the sea, 